and welcome to another edition of South Texas Crossfire. This is attorney Joe Flores reminding you to join us each and every week right here on KTMV with the Don Humberto and Lopez family. Thanks for making it happen. Channel 6 Time Warner in Corpus Christi and also don't forget their station on Time Warner Channel 21 K Alamo in San Antonio, Texas. We play every weekend there and also on the CBS affiliate KVTV in Laredo. Gabe Gonzalez and his right hand Jacob making it happen in us out there right after CSI and right before Wheel of Fortune. And now we're also on YouTube. You can also load us up anytime, 24 hours a day. Go to YOUTUBE.com and hit search term South Texas Crossfire. And now you can see our hundred videos and growing loading up there. And with me today, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing not only a former mentor or always be a mentor of mine and a good friend and a great lawyer. We're talking about Benny Agosto. Welcome, Benny. How are you? Oh, good man. man, it's good to see you. It's been a while, man, let me tell you. And thanks for having us over here at 800 Commerce here in Houston, Texas. This building itself has a history of its own, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, uh, how old is this building now? What? Over 100 years old. Over 100. And they've even shot movies. Help me out. Beverly D'Angelo, Peter Strauss. Strauss. Uh, and what was that movie called? I'm the trying Trial. To the Trial. The Trial. And, and there was also a, a great history here because this is one of the oldest and most respected law firms, Abraham and Watkins, which you are a partner. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I know your hard work, uh, Benny, for not only advocating, we just finished recently interviewing one of our great mentors, Dean T. Gerald Treese, who celebrated his 100th national victory for advocacy. And many of us were fortunate enough to have him as a mentor. But here we are. Let's jump feet first in and let's dispel some myths about personal injury trial law. A lot of people have total misconceptions. The media, insurance companies, and everybody have separated trial lawyers from their clients and done everything they could, including legislating us out of the courthouse. And we're gonna talk about that in the second half, but let's jump in on one of your cases of many that have really captivated not only the media, but also have, have really shocked people about, and we're talking about British Petroleum. And uh, can you tell us a little bit, for those people who don't have the facts on British Petroleum, when, uh, when did that explosion happen and, and how did it happen? Yes, what happened here was that in March of 2005, British Petroleum had a chemical plant refinery working in Texas City, Texas. And what that led to, through the different events that we've discovered in the litigation, is that they had an older plant they had bought from Amoco. And instead of working it and maintaining it, they decided to just run it f to make money. Mm -hmm. And making money is great. We're all in favor of that. This is America. This That's is right. a capital system. However, when you make money at the risk of injuring workers, we all have a problem with that. And the trial lawyers and the lawyers like our firm that have represented folks for almost 60 years here in Texas, representing injured workers, we have a problem with that. And what we want to do is tell all companies, whoever it may be, from Amico to the small company, you have to take care of your workers. That's you have right. to take care of the folks that are there. And unfortunately, in March of 2005, the negligent acts that were occurring, the maintenance, lack of maintenance of that plant, culminated into an explosion that killed 16 folks and injured hundreds. Well, and, and when you bring that out, a lot of people, let's dispel one myth about, you know, that uh, I wish that the legal system was as simple as Boston Legal, which I love, great show, Law and Order. It lasts about an hour. I wish the trial process, the pain, the suffering that never goes away, the people that have been injured, that that, that pain could go away, but it won't, and those that they've left behind. But really, a lot of the uh, preparation that a trial lawyer does, countless hours, uh, interviewing clients, uh, comforting their families and doing all that, that never gets publicized in the media. It's all about, oh, they got another verdict, trial lawyers are gorging and making all this money. I mean, let's try to educate the public on that because I think that's an important point about being a lawyer is that how many cases have you uh, really cashed in or, or that they've been highly publicized compared to the amount of people you've helped, say, pro bono? Yeah, what happens is that on an everyday basis in Houston, South Texas, there are large companies that are working, trying to make a living, trying to make a profit, and like I said, right. there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when we shortchange safety, when we shortchange the lives of workers at their risk and at their peril, then their injuries and their deaths 
should not be you know, left untouched or un, uh, called for. And what we do at this firm, what we've been doing uh, in South Texas and in Texas, is representing individuals and families that have been injured. And what happens is on a day-to-day -day basis, they're getting injured. Right. And nobody's out there helping them. You know, if, if a worker gets injured tomorrow, the company has a new worker to take that person's place. That's right. And the workman's comp thing, some of them don't even have a remedy. Everybody thinks you get injured at work. You're going to cash in by going to a lawyer like you who's gotten good results. But a lot of the time, they're prevented because of the workman's comp statute. That's right. And what we try to do is find every legal remedy for the worker and his or her family. And what we see day in and day out is that these workers are left out in the cold because a company needs to move on with their business. And the worker who's been injured or sometimes killed, their family doesn't get the fair shot. Right. And, well, and so we are here to take care of that. We've been doing it for 60 years, and that's why we uh, continue to do it successfully. And, and you bring up a good point. Uh, let's, let's freeze frame it. We're going to come back to the BP case because I think that's an important example of walking through a concrete example of how the firm comes together as a team, how they help out those injured people, or if they're passed away, they're survivors to, to help them and get compensated for something that wasn't right. But you mentioned the 60 years. That's a long time for a firm to be together in the legal field, especially like in Houston. Everyone knows who Abraham and Watkins is, this firm. Uh, many of the successful lawyers that have come through here, Clark through here, uh, uh, and I know that you all support the legal system, the legal clinic, the trial advocacy clinics. How did the firm start? The firm started in 1949 by four lawyers. All were very successful trial lawyers in their own right, and then decided to come together and start this firm called, at the time was called, called Hill, Brown, Kranz, or Abraham. All of those men ended up being successful judges or jurists here in Texas. The firm kept on going, and today we're the oldest plaintiff's firm in Houston, Texas. Well, and, and uh, the building itself, as we said, is very historical. There's a lot of history and a lot of advocacy that has come through here that has evolved to now the 21st century, Abraham and Watkins. I think it's important to underline that these lawyers, as many people have been inundated by the media, that personal injury lawyers are about the money or they're about, uh, you know, getting theirs in the short term, quick buck. These people have been around more than half a century and they've been here serving people. I personally clerked here and I've seen that experience and the camaraderie, the family that you all have here. And, and I think that makes the difference in why this firm has stood tall for all these years. Now, how long have you been here now? I've been associated with the firm since 1991. I started as a law clerk, then came back as a lawyer and eventually became the first Hispanic partner of this law firm. It's a great history, I'm very proud of that. But I think our future is more important because we continue to put together the right folks and the right people, the right combination to make the right team that ultimately will represent our clients. Well, and, and in a little while, we're going to be interviewing Mr. Randy Sorrells, who's a good friend of yours, good friend of mine. He also, I, I had the privilege of clerking with him. And I'm going to get into MedMal and other areas with him and also tort reform. But I want to touch on that here. But let's get back a little bit to the BP case, because I think for our listeners out there in the Valley and in the Internet, they want to know exactly what happened. We saw some of it from the 60 minutes, you know, expose special. they had on it, the special that they had. And one lawyer, I think it was a, uh, a gentleman, Brett Coons, that represented that person. But there were many others. Uh, that, there were countless others that were injured and many that were dead. So when they called you up, what was the first thing that happened? I mean, were you all at ground zero, went to go investigate it after they called you up? Or? Yeah, what happens in our case is that we're have been privileged to represent clients that have worked in the chemical industry for many, many years. Our firm has been uh, recognized as one of the top firms representing folks that work at chemical plants when they've been injured. And when one of these explosions occur, somehow folks call us from word of mouth and from previous experiences that we do a good job. Right. So we start getting phone calls. We ended up representing about 60 individuals. Wow. And one of the folks had lost a loved one, uh, a father, in. Uh, these cases. So we immediately started investigating. We were in and went to the plant. We investigated what happened. We worked hand in hand with the experts, the Chemical Safety Board and the OSHA investigators and found out really what happened. Uh, 